Hey, everybody. Welcome to this very special uh, follow-up episode of On Cinema, calling it a On Cinema follow-up, uh, regarding American Graffiti. And uh, I'm so glad everyone enjoyed the, the live from Modesto. It was really fun. Um, but I've been getting a lot of uh, tweets and messages from people suggesting uh, that American Graffiti was, in fact, not shot in Modesto. So... Um, I reached out to a couple different people. It took a lot of work, but I got um, a very special guest with me, and he's going to settle a couple of uh, of uh, confu- some confusion that's out there regarding where where American Graffiti was shot. Um, I, people have been sending me these websites and uh, things like IMDb that suggest that it was not shot, but um, it just goes to show you that you should never trust um, anything you see on the internet. Um, my, uh, frequent guest, Greg Turkington knows a lot about this movie in particular. And I think it goes to show you when somebody, um, suggests, uh, tells you the truth, you should just accept it as the truth and not try to be a know-it-all and, um, and go on the internet and claim that they're wrong. So I would like to welcome my guest. Uh, he's, uh, the director and producer of so many great movies, uh, Mr. George Lucas. Uh, thank you, George, for coming into the, uh, uh, the garage here. Sorry for the mess. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, just before we get into the whole Modesto thing, first of all, um, you know, shooting this film in Modesto, just if, even the, the, where the very idea for the movie came from, could you talk a little bit about where the idea for American, uh, where the idea for American Graffiti came from? I guess the, the anthropologist side of me never went away, and I was very interested in the fact that in the 70s, um, uh, when I was working uh, in the film industry, obviously we've been through the 60s and that whole innocence of the 50s, the mating rituals of the 50s, uh-huh. the uniquely American mating rituals of meeting uh, the opposite sex in car, sex in car <laughs> uh, was very fascinating to me. Huh. I really liked uh, this kind of lost uh, ritual that had gone on in the United States between 1940 and uh, you know, basically the beginning of the '60s. Okay. And I saw the beginning of the '60s as a real transition uh, in uh, the culture, yeah. uh, in the way because of the Vietnam War and all the things we were going through. Oh. Uh, and I wanted to make a movie about it. Right. Well. And um, I had always uh, 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 liked the idea of uh, Fellini's film *The Vitelloni*, which is kind of the same issue about growing up. Right, and I don't, about you know taking responsibility and moving out of the house and that right. whole trauma. I haven't uh, seen that. And um, it was one of the themes that was in my first film, THX, mm-hmm. and I wanted to expand on it. Francis had said, you know, why don't you do a you know a regular movie, you know, because THX was pretty uh, out there for right. a theatrical film. And uh, Fran said, you can do a regular movie. Why don't you do a comedy? Why don't you do something that's really accessible to people? <laughs> and so American Graffiti was the closest thing I could think of to an right. accessible movie. Um, and the problem was that the studios didn't see it that way. Uh, they said it was, you know, not about anything. Uh, there was no story. Um, you couldn't tell four different stories and cut them up like that to where you intercut them and they weren't related to each other. Mm-hmm. They said that was impossible. Uh, they said you couldn't put that much music in a movie. It was just, you can't just have a music track going through the whole thing. Uh, there were a lot of issues that were very controversial at the time that kept it from being made. And um, for, so for two years, I struggled to get it off the ground and get it made. Right. And finally, um, I got a studio to approve the project. They liked the script. They wanted me to do it. Uh, but they needed a name to go with it. And then Francis came back after doing The Godfather. And said, "I'll, you know, stand up, and right. be the producer on it." Cool. Then I panicked and realized that I needed a better script. And <laughs> hired some friends of mine to rewrite it and make it work. Right. Well, can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, shooting uh, the movie in Modesto and uh, some of the challenges that you had? I mean, you're from there, and you must have known a lot of people and uh, knew kind of how the city was laid out. And uh, did that pose was that helpful in making the movie? I mean, and you know, uh, just like what were the challenges to make this movie? It seemed because if it was one of your first movies, it must have been hard. Um, well, I, the hardest thing was that it was all at night. Uh-huh. You know, it was a very short schedule. It was twenty-eight nights, um, wow. and uh, it was short in that 
The sun went down at nine o'clock at night, came up at five o'clock in the morning. That made me a very short day. Yeah. Uh, and night. I only had, you know, 28 of them. So it was a very, very, very fast and short schedule, especially considering it was all on location with cars that broke down and mm-hmm. all the other drama that would go on in that kind of situation. Right. So it was a, it was a, just physically a very difficult thing to get through. All right. Well, thank you very much, George, for coming in. And uh, maybe next time you can come back, we could talk about some of, you, some of your other movies. And uh, again, it's just been a real pleasure. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope that clears it up. Uh, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, uh, we'll he- well, thanks for listening. And also listen for next week for the latest episode of On Cinema. Thank you. Thank you.